ever dreamt of like stepping back in time, you know, like wandering through ancient abbeys and strolling down cobbled streets. Those streets just steeped in history. Mm -hmm. Well, today's deep dive takes us to Dunfermline, Ooh. Scotland, <laughs> a town that's practically bursting right. with historical significance yeah. and scenic beauty. And we have got the perfect roadmap for this journey. Okay. A Substack article by Narrative Nomad okay. called Top 10 Places to Visit in Dunfermline. Th this article isn't just a list, though, right? Right. It's more like a treasure map. <laughs> highlighting those must-see spots that really capture yes. the spirit of Dunfermline. Ready to uncover some hidden gems. Absolutely. Let's dive in. Okay, so the article starts off strong. Okay. Dunfermline Abbey. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking. What am I thinking? Another abbey. But this isn't just any abbey. Right. This is where Scottish kings and queens are buried. Wow. Imagine the stories those walls could tell. It's like stepping right into the pages of a history book. Right. This abbey dates back to the 12th century. And the article highlights its stunning architecture, especially the craftsmanship, the stonework, and those vibrant stained glass windows. It's giving me major time capsule vibes. Yes. And speaking of stepping back in time, the article also mentions a place called Pitt and Creef Park, or as the locals call it, the Glen. Okay. A sprawling green space gifted to the town by none other than Why Andrew I... Carnegie. Yes, that Carnegie. The article really emphasizes Carnegie's generosity. Yeah. He wanted this park to be a place for everyone, and today it stands as a testament to that vision. Right. With its gardens, walking trails, and even an animal sanctuary. I love it. It's not every day you come across a park right. with its own animal sanctuary. Yeah. Talk about an unexpected surprise. And there's even a Victorian glass house nestled within the park. What? Imagine strolling through those gardens surrounded by exotic plants. What a photographer's paradise. Okay, I'm adding visit the glass house to my Dunfermline itinerary right now. Yeah. But let's talk more about Carnegie. This article goes beyond just mentioning his generosity. It takes us deep into his life story with not one, but two must-see attractions. The Andrew Carnegie Birthplace Museum and the Dunfermline Carnegie Library, his first ever library. What I find fascinating is that the museum isn't just about Carnegie's wealth or his philanthropy. Okay. It showcases his humble beginnings right there in Dunfermline, right. painting a picture of the environment that shaped his character and ultimately led him to give back in such a significant way. It's a good reminder that our beginnings don't have to define our future. Exactly. Okay, so we've got royalty, natural beauty, a touch of Carnegie, Yeah. but the article doesn't stop there, does it? Not at all. It also mentions a 15th century building called Abbott House. Okay. A historic golf club, which, knowing Scotland, probably has some breathtaking scenery. And to top it off, the Queen's Ferry crossing the world's longest three-tower suspension bridge. Wow. That's a mouthful, but it sounds incredible. I can only imagine the views you get from that bridge. It's a testament to how Dunfermline beautifully blends its rich history with modern engineering marvels. And speaking of blending old and new, you can even catch a glimpse of the iconic fourth rail bridge from there. Talk about a photographer's dream. Okay, before we get too sidetracked by bridges, there's one more spot from this article that really caught my eye. Okay, what's that? St. Margaret's Cave. It sounds like a place shrouded in mystery and history. It definitely is. Yeah. This cave was a refuge for St. Margaret herself back in the 11th century. Wow. And the article really emphasizes the atmosphere, the natural rock formations, the sense of peace and tranquility. Yeah. It's like taking a step back in time to a place untouched by modernity. It makes you wonder what it would have been like to seek refuge in that cave all those centuries ago. I know, right? Okay, so we've got abbeys, parks, Carnegie's legacy, breathtaking bridges. This article is really painting a picture of Dunfermline as a town with a story to tell. Definitely. But before we dive even deeper into these incredible destinations, let's take a quick pause for a word from our sponsors. It's incredible to think about like how many layers of history are kind of woven together in a place like Dunfermline. We've barely scratched the surface. Right. And this Substack article does a fantastic job of like mapping out a journey through those layers. Totally. One incredible location at a time. You're right. And it's not just about checking things off a list. Right. It's about understanding, you know, the significance of each place, the stories they hold. Yes. And how they all connect to create this unique tapestry that is Dunfermline. Exactly. And speaking of stories. Okay. Let's revisit Dunfermline Abbey. 
The article dives deeper into its connection to Scottish royalty, okay. mentioning that it was founded by Queen Margaret, who later became a saint. Talk about a legacy, right? I know. It's one thing to build an abbey, but to be remembered as a saint, like centuries later, that's next level. Yeah. And this abbey really does sound like something out of a history book, especially with its Romanesque architecture. Right. And for those who maybe aren't as familiar with Romanesque architecture, just Picture rounded arches, thick walls. Yeah. A sense of solidity that's both imposing and awe-inspiring. Wow. The article specifically calls out the intricate stone carvings. Wow. Imagine the craftsmanship it took to create those details, you know, all those centuries ago. It's mind-boggling when you think about it. I know. And of course, we can't forget the Abbey's most famous residence, the Scottish Royals. Yeah. Like, laid to rest within its walls. Yes. The article specifically mentions Robert the Bruce. Of course. Right. It's amazing to think about, you know, walking through those hallowed halls, knowing that you're tracing the steps of kings and queens. Right. The article even suggests taking a guided tour to really get the full historical rundown. Oh, yeah. Which I think would be incredible. Oh, absolutely. I'm already picturing myself on that tour, like soaking up every day. Yeah. <laughs> and imagining the lives of the people who walked those halls like centuries ago. But for now, let's shift gears from the grandeur of the Abbey to the tranquil beauty of Pittencrease Park, or the Glen, as it's affectionately known. Ah, yes, the park that Andrew Carnegie gifted to his hometown. Right. This is where Dunfermline's story takes a more heartwarming turn, I think. Yeah. The article paints a picture of this park as a true sanctuary, a place where people from all walks of life can escape into nature and enjoy a moment of peace. It's a beautiful example of Carnegie's commitment to giving back to his community. It is. The article mentions that the park spans over 76 acres. Imagine that. That's huge. Gardens, woodland, playgrounds, picnic areas. There's something for everyone. And remember that Victorian glass house we talked about earlier? Yes. The article highlights its collection of exotic plants, making it a must-see for any plant lover or photography enthusiast. Okay, I'm officially convinced. Pitt and Creef Park is going straight to the top of my Dunfermline must-see list. But speaking of Carnegie, let's delve a little deeper into the man behind the generosity. Okay. With a visit to the Andrew Carnegie Birthplace Museum. It's easy to kind of idolize someone like Carnegie, especially when you see the impact of his philanthropy. Right. But this museum reminds us that he wasn't born into wealth and privilege. Right. He had to work hard and overcome challenges to achieve success. It makes his story all the more inspiring, right? It does. The article mentions that the museum does a great job of showcasing his journey. From his humble beginnings in Dunfermline to his rise as the steel magnate and philanthropist in America. Exactly. It, it's about understanding the forces that shaped him, the values that were instilled in him during his childhood in Dunfermline. Right. And how those experiences ultimately influenced his decision to dedicate his fortune to philanthropy. And speaking of philanthropy, we can't forget Carnegie's passion for libraries. Of course not. This article takes us to a place that holds a special significance in his story. The Dunfermline Carnegie Library, his very first. His first one. I know. It's incredible to think that this one library, established right here in his hometown, was just the beginning of a global movement. Right. Today, Carnegie libraries can be found all over the world, a testament to his enduring legacy of promoting education and access to knowledge for all. It's amazing how one person's vision can have such a profound and lasting impact. I know, it's incredible. And this library isn't just a historical artifact. Right. It's still a vibrant part of the Dunfermline community. Absolutely. The article highlights its beautiful Victorian design and mentions that it's not just a place to, you know, borrow books. Yeah. It hosts events, workshops, exhibitions. Oh, wow. Keeping Carnegie's spirit of community engagement alive. I love that. It's a reminder that these places aren't just about the past. Right. They're living, breathing spaces that continue to shape the present. Mm -hmm. As we've journeyed through, like, these historical landmarks, these hidden gems of Dunfermline. Yeah. One thing has become, like abundantly clear to me. Okay. This town is so much more than just a collection of tourist attractions. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. It's the kind of place that seeps into your soul and leaves you wanting more. Yes. We've explored the grandeur of the Abbey. Right. The tranquility of the park, the legacy of Andrew Carnegie. Right. But what about those, like, everyday experiences? Right. The yeah. ones that really bring a place to life. 
Exactly. And that's where this Substack article, like as fantastic as it is, yep. it only takes us so far. You know, right. it provides like the starting point, those must see highlights. Yeah. But it's up to us. Yeah. The travelers to discover like the heartbeat of Dunfermline, mm. the hidden rhythms that make it truly unique. I love that perspective. It's yeah. like the article gives us the musical notes, but it's up to us to arrange them into our own like personal symphony of experiences. What a wonderful analogy. Hmm. And as we kind of think about like composing our own Dunfermline adventures, yeah. I'm curious, what are some of those like unscripted moments that you think would enrich this journey? Oh, there's so many possibilities. Imagine stumbling upon a local pub. Oh yeah. Tucked away on a side street. Yes. It's walls filled with like the laughter and stories of generations past. Or maybe you wander into a charming bookshop. Yes. It's shelves overflowing with literary treasures waiting to be discovered. Don't forget those like little cafes yes. filled with the aroma of like freshly baked goods. Oh yeah. Where you can just linger over a cup of coffee and soak up the local atmosphere. Those are the kinds of experiences that often turn into, you know, cherished travel memories. Right. You're so right. Yeah. Because a true adventure isn't just about checking off a list of attractions. Right. It's about opening yourself up to the unexpected. Yes. Embracing the unknown and yeah. allowing the spirit of a place to just like wash over you. Beautifully said. And that's what I find so inspiring about this deep dive into Dunfermline. It's not just about, you know, the destination itself, but about the journey we take both literally and figuratively, as we explore new places and kind of open ourselves up to new experiences. Exactly. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Dunfermline, inspired by this fantastic Substack article, remember this. Don't just visit the places on the list. Go beyond the guidebooks. Lose yourself in the charming streets. Strike up conversations with the locals. Savor the flavors of the region and discover the true heart of Dunfermline for yourself. Who knows what hidden gems you might uncover. Until next time, happy travels.